Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Boyko, canine geneticist at Cornell and Embark's chief science officer. Today, we'll be discussing how to factor genetic results into breeding decisions. Many breeders receive their dog's Embark results and find out that their dog's results show them to be carrier or at risk for one or more health conditions. This begs the question, should dogs with one or two copies of a deleterious variant be used in a breeding program, or should they be excluded altogether? The natural inclination of a breeder might be to exclude a dog from their breeding program entirely if it's a carrier for a genetic disease, even if it's otherwise a perfect dog. However, this is often the exact opposite of what is best for their breeding program and their breed. Most genetic tests in dogs are autosomal recessive. Both males and females have two copies of the gene and two copies of the mutation are needed for a dog to be at risk of the disease. Dogs with one copy are called carriers and can pass along the mutation, but are not at risk. A common situation is a breeder that has made a breeding decision that they want to breed a dog. The dog has all the qualities they are looking for and has a clean bill of health. They know genetic testing is important too and order a DNA test that contains all the recommended tests for their breed. If the results come back that the dog is a carrier for one or more diseases, what should the breeder do? In almost all situations, the breeder should still breed the dog, but only to dogs where high quality genetic testing has been done to ensure they are clear of the disease. The breeder has already made a decision that this is a high quality dog they want to contribute to the future of their line. Because a genetic test exists, the breeder can ensure a carrier dog is only mated to clear dogs, so there is no risk of producing affected pups if proper genetic testing is done. But isn't there a risk that by allowing carriers to breed, you're propagating the disease? Actually, the risk is usually the opposite. If breeders make the decision not to breed carriers, they are trading a known risk, a disease variant for which a genetic test exists, for an unknown risk, all the unknown genetic variants that affect health and disease in the breed. Removing carriers from the breeding pool reduces genetic diversity in the breed, sometimes drastically so and often increases the overall rate of other heritable diseases in the breed. Genetic diseases become a problem for a breed because their frequency can increase from founder effects, popular sires, or genetic bottlenecks. By using a genetic bottleneck to purge one disease, many new diseases for which genetic tests do not yet exist may become problematic. If breeders should continue to breed carriers, does that mean a breed is stuck with a disease forever? In most cases, the answer is no. When a disease-associated mutation is at very low frequency in a breed, say when the carrier frequency is less than 1 or 2%, there isn't much of a bottleneck created by removing carriers from the breeding pool. Breeders may continue breeding carriers for a few generations, but by replacing some of these carriers with clear dogs of similar quality, the overall frequency of carriers will decline, and eventually the breed will be free of the disease. In general, this strategy can be used by breeders over longer periods of time to slowly reduce the carrier frequency to the point where it is safe to eliminate the last few carriers from the breeding pool. By doing litter testing, breeders can make holistic decisions with all available information regarding which individuals they want to keep in their breeding program. The goal isn't to eliminate carriers or at-risk dogs from the breeding program, but rather to substitute carriers for at-risk dogs or clear dogs for carriers in the situation where the quality of the dogs is otherwise nearly identical. By only substituting a few carriers per generation, the vast majority of all the other genetic diversity in these carriers can be saved. Slow and steady wins the race. In some cases, the frequency of a disease-associated mutation is exceedingly high in a breed, over 50%, maybe close to 100%. This is the most difficult scenario, as often it would be impossible to retain enough genetic diversity in the breed if the mutation is eliminated. Breed clubs should take an active role in consultation with geneticists and veterinary experts to develop a breeding plan that protects the long-term genetic health of the breed. In many cases, these high-frequency disease-associated mutations have a low penetrance, at-risk dogs are still mostly unlikely to develop the disease, and determining whether environment, nutrition, or genetic modifiers can prevent more dogs from developing the disease may be a better course of action than trying to breed the high-frequency variant out of the breed entirely. With the advances in canine genetic testing, it is now possible to screen for hundreds of genetic mutations known to affect health in one or more breeds. 
While most of these mutations only occur in one or a handful of breeds, some mutations occur in many breeds but are only associated with disease risk in some. What should a breeder do if a dog is clear for breed relevant conditions but is a carrier or at risk for a condition not known to affect the breed? Once again, our general advice is to breed these high quality dogs despite this genetic result, especially if they can be bred to clear dogs. Many mutations only cause disease on certain genetic backgrounds, meaning mutations that can increase disease risk in some breeds might not have an effect in other breeds at all. If this condition is not known to be a heritable disorder in a breed, removing carrier or at-risk dogs from the breeding pool means removing genetic diversity from a breed, something we know can cause issues down the road, for an unknown and possibly non-existent benefit. We encourage owners and breeders to fill out their dog's Embark Health Survey so we can work with breed clubs to monitor the prevalence of inherited disorders in each breed and whether certain genetic tests are predictive or not in certain breeds. Embark has the resources to help breeders know which genetic tests are relevant for their breed and know how prevalent different disease-associated mutations are in their breed. This information, combined with the accuracy of Embark's genomic COI and the ability to estimate litter COI for various crosses, means breeders have more genetic data at their fingertips than ever before. Still, genetic test results are just one piece of the bigger picture when it comes to understanding your dog's health and making healthy breeding decisions. Thank you for watching the Embark for Breeder Inside series. Please stay tuned for Embark for Breeder's Facebook page and Embark emails for more Insider Series content. Thank you.